Welcome back to the Future Food Tech podcast. I'm Jet, the Startup Partnerships Manager across the Future Food Tech series, and it's a pleasure to welcome you back. Now, before I introduce today's guest, this coming March in San Francisco, we'll be launching the hotly anticipated Taste Lab, an experiential platform that will enable our attendees to get up close and personal with some of the most advanced products and innovations from across the globe. Now, with this in mind, today's guests are on a microbial mission to reimagine the future of dairy, and we'll be showcasing some of their early products in the Taste Lab, whilst also joining our main stage session around consumer acceptance. It's a pleasure to welcome to the virtual stage the co-founder and CEO of Remilk, Aviv Wolf. Welcome. Hi, Jack. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure is all ours. So I, I guess just to kick off for the uninitiated, can you give us a bit of a short introduction into Remilk and perhaps more importantly, how you guys are reimagining the future of dairy? Absolutely. So if you want the shortest version, I would only say we're making real dairy without the cow, but uh, deep diving a little bit further. So um, at Remilk, actually what we've been doing in the last few years is developing a process to reinvent and reimagine our dairy system. So we make, we're making dairy products, uh, cheeses, yogurt, ice cream, and even liquid milk using microbial uh, fermentation. So we're using microbes instead of cows. And for us, this is all about you know reimagining uh, this system, this system which is you know, we've been using it for more than 10,000 years. This uh, known to be highly inefficient in its uh, resources uh, usage in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, mm -hmm. land use, water use. Uh, and so we milk is able to outperform the traditional industry by using a tiny, tiny uh, portion of the you know, environmental impact compared to the traditional dairy industry. And this, I would say, for us, how we reimagine uh, the entire uh, system by you know, introducing the next generation of dairy. Amazing. As I briefly mentioned at the, the top of the podcast, you guys will be showcasing one of your products in the Taste Lab at the summit in March. Can you share a bit of a teaser about what our attendees can expect to see and perhaps more importantly, taste? Uh, absolutely. So I think for, for us, this is probably one of the most exciting part of the, you know, of the summit. Um, you know, we, are, we used to talk about science, we used to talk about financing, but eventually we're a food company. And so, What's more better than trying delicious uh, products, uh, you know, in person? And this is what, you know, this uh, summit is all about. And, and we are going to bring a few, uh, you know, uh, to showcase a few applications and in order to show the versatility of our animal-free dairy. So we're super excited about that and looking forward to get your feedback on our, um, you know, invention. Yeah, we're, we're super excited as well. I, I guess uh, another part of this, you'll be joining us at the summit to speak on a, a panel discussion around consumer acceptance and understanding. Can you share with us kind of Remilk's outlook on this topic specifically and why it's so important? Absolutely. So um, I'd say that for Remilk, it's all about transparency. And, and for us, it's, you know, it's a real no brainer because we understand the importance of, you know, being transparent. You can see everything is transparent, even in you know, in the lab, you can see everything. And this is really the vision that uh, we are trying to, you know, uh, implement. And, you know, talking about co consumers today, everyone is, is so confused. We have plant-based, we have a soy and oat, oat milk, we have the, you know, traditional dairy applications, we have cultivated dairy, we have fermentation-derived dairy. And so for us, agreement number one, I would say, criteria is to be as much as transparent as we can with consumers as much as transparent as we can with our, you know, B2B partners and really, you know, educate everyone and tell everyone what is fermentation, what the microbe is doing, how they, you know, how we're making our products. Um, and, and, you know, we, we've, we've started implementing our marketing strategy there these days and, you know, probably going to talk about 2022 for women in a few minutes, but really for us, it's all about being as transparent as we can with consumers. Um, and yeah, and look forward to this discussion as well. Amazing. I want to talk about you for a second. I guess in recent years, Israel has really established itself as a, as a bit of a global leader when it comes to innovation in food tech. How did your life path lead you into this space and, and why dairy innovation specifically? So it's a great question. Um, I think that one of the facts and, and, and you know, data point that uh, really blew me away even before uh, launching green milk and founding green milk was the fact that you know today is about 50 percent of the world's habitable land is used for animal agriculture 
And you know, all the you know, uh, um, all the reports around the world are saying that between 25 to 30 years, we are going to consume about two times more food. So I've made you know, the math, two times more than 50% is 100%. So then I realized, you know, that the existing food that we're eating is extremely inefficient. And more than that, it's just, you know, not practical to continue using animals to make our food. And this one, you know, it's true for both uh, meat, dairy, eggs, everything which is animal derived. And, you know, I kept digging and digging into the, you know, facts and details about the animal agriculture space. And really, really, when it comes to you know, land use and water use, uh, you understand that there is no reason. And it's actually, uh, you know, so inefficient that even the existing dairy industry starting to understand today the need for a shift. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, moving forward with the, with these uh, uh, thoughts in mind, I actually realized maybe not so long afterwards that all these facts and details, uh, although very important, are not enough to make this transition. And you know, at Remilk, we believe that revolution need much more than sustainable sustainability aspects, and you know, being slightly more efficient on land and and, and water consumption, mm -hmm. and you know, for Remick, we are trying to build something, and this is what really drove me drove me into this uh, uh, field. The fact that we want to build something which is no brainer. We believe that we can, you know, have this revolution not because we are, you know, um, better for the environment or the fact that we don't have lactose in our products. We are make, going to make this revolution because we are going to be a no brainer solution for the industry. We are going to be, yeah, much more sustainable, but we are going to be cheaper. We are going to be more delicious, more nutritious. And this is what really, you know, blew my mind and, and drove me further to, to come up with the Remilk uh, um, idea of trying to build something which is so much better than the dairy products and the meat that we are, you know, consuming today. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of mentioned something quite key there, sustainability consumption. I guess it kind of leads into a question which I wanted to ask, which is a little bit different, but I guess it, it's clear that your core focus is to reimagine dairy, as you've said. But when you take a closer look, Remilk's mission actually extends beyond this when it comes to sustainability, social responsibility and the, the overall environment. Consumption habits themselves are notably paying a big part of this. And so I'm, I'm actually quite keen to hear or learn from you, you know, what plant-based brands or products, be that meat or dairy alternatives, do you know yourself and your team consume or, or look up to? So you said something very interesting. And really, you know, for Remilk, sustainability is much more than establishing a sustainable production system for dairy. And really, you know, in-house and, and, and outside of the company, we are putting a lot of efforts on implementing sustainability. And, and, and you know, we, we partnered with companies around us to compost our food and to recycle our waste and to donate uh, money to communities around us and really we're, we're trying to build something which is you know much more than you know producing a sustainable dairy but really bringing a message of hope and joy to the planet um, and you know we're big believers in our missions and we see the results and we see the feedback from our investors customers and and partners and this is why we are so eager about the future to come Amazing. I guess you mentioned earlier 2022, and I'm quite keen to, to kind of go into that and hear what's next for you guys in 2022 and beyond. So I would say that, uh, sorry, for, for Remilk, uh, 2022 is going to be, you know, a year of action. And I mentioned slightly there, you know, we decided to establish a B2B model, uh, meaning that we are, you know, selling and working with large CPG and dairy companies and, you know, sharing our products and our proteins with them. Um, and so for us, you know, we've been seeing the demand and the feedback uh, that we, we've been getting from those uh, uh, you know, huge companies. And for us, it's now it's the time to start uh, implementing what we believe in and start you know, getting those uh, uh, products into the market and, 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 and start supplying significant amounts because really we're talking about food, we're talking about dairy. This is something that needs to be delivered in huge quantities. Um, and, and so we're going to bring you some samples to the summit, but obviously this is only a tiny drop in the ocean of what we expect to have in the next few years. And 20 is going to be the beginning of you know, this uh, 
significant next stage of, of, of free milk as a company, as a food company. Well, that's pretty much uh, all we have time for, unfortunately. And thanks so much, Avi, for taking some time to speak with us today. Um, how can our viewers get in touch with you? So feel free to visit our website and our social media, and we are very responsive, and we very much appreciated your uh, your replies. So looking forward to hear from you guys. Thank you very much, Jeff. Amazing. I want to take a final moment just to uh, to thank um, our special guests for joining us today, our viewers and attendees, and of course, all of our partners uh, from the team here at Future Food Tech. We'll see you in 2022. Thank you very much.